This is the most requested curry recipe from everywhere I've seen DMs, comments, etc., and simultaneously the best of all time. Okay, so today we are making a Thai green curry, but not just a Thai green curry. Sure, you go to the store, get your little Thai curry piece, oh yeah, put it in the, and then you mix it and cook it and it's great, right? Wrong. You have instantaneously made the most boring Thai green curry you can. Does that feel good? Feel good about that? If you really wanna make a Thai green curry worthy of a little kiss from and maybe even a Thai grandmother if you're so lucky. Then you're gonna make your own curry paste from scratch in a mortar and pestle by hand. Yes, it takes time, but I'm telling you, this is life altering flavor. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? A proper Thai green curry cannot exist without a green curry paste. For going, it would be like making a sandwich with no bread. And yeah, sure, you can use store-bought if you want it to taste the least flavorful and exciting as possible. But if you want a curry so good that it makes your toes curl, then you're gonna wanna make it yourself. So let's begin there. There are a lot of ingredients here, but it's all going in one place, this large mortar and pestle. I've seen people use a blender, then I've also seen people break their blenders making this. So pre-grate your hard veggies like galangal and lemongrass before blending if you go that route. But I'm gonna go, Mr. Tr today. So start by combining two teaspoons or four grams of coriander seeds, one teaspoon or two grams of cumin seeds, and one teaspoon or three grams of white peppercorns on a small baking dish. Pop those into an oven that's been preheated to 325 for about five minutes until lightly toasted. You could also do this in a pan if you want. Then let those cool completely. Next, get your veg prepped. Are you ready for this? Very thinly sliced nine Thai chilies, three serrano chilies, two small shallots, seven cloves of garlic, four cilantro stems, no leaves, one stalk of lemongrass, a two inch knob of peeled galangal. Please do not use ginger here. Okay, galangal is key here. And lastly, very finely chiffonade three kefir lime leaves. Now, since these are all getting added in a specific order, to make grinding easier, I lined mine up. And just by taking one look at these lovely aromatics, makes me think that this could very well lead to a good old fashioned nice slapping. Boom! Now get a large mortar and pestle, start with your toasted spices, grind those with your pestle until you get a powder, then get a towel underneath because you're destroying your countertop. Follow that up with your sliced Thai chilies, grind those into a decently fine paste, about one minute, then add your sliced serranos and really get in there and grind all your chilies until as fine as possible. This will take two to three minutes depending on your technique. You might think, oh wow, this is pretty fine. Wrong. You can always make it finer. If it's fine enough, the seeds won't really be visible. From there, I rough chopped my sliced galangal and added that. Grind that down until it's pastified, another one to two minutes. Then add your lemongrass, which has also been pretty finely chopped. Grind that bad boy until pastified. This one will take about three to four minutes to break down. This is where technique comes in, pal. Use human instinct sensuous motion, use your grinder to press it along the wall as you gently twist your pestle to get it nice. Then grind in your kefir lime leaf till smooth, followed by coriander stem, also till smooth, shallots, grind till smooth, your garlic, grind it till smooth. Now once it's nice and smooth, finally, the zest of one lime, blend it until smooth, and last but not least, finish that off with a half teaspoon or four grams of dried Thai shrimp paste, blending all that together, and your paste is finally done, totaling in at around 15 to 20 minutes of grinding. Yes, it's tedious, but the effort turns into reward when everyone is moaning at the dinner table. You'll know it's smooth enough if you can form a ball with it like this. Hey, yo, it's the green curry paste ball. Oh my God, can I have your autograph? So on to the easiest part, the curry. In a medium-sized pot, add two tablespoons or 28 milliliters of vegetable oil. Heat that over a medium heat until hot, hot, bing, bong. Then add all of your curry paste. Yep, all of it. If you want to have leftover curry paste, then simply double the paste recipe when you make it. Cook that guy down, stirring often until it's relatively dried out and is starting to stick to the bottom of the pan about three to four minutes. Then stir in five cloves of very finely chopped garlic. Let that cook for about 25 seconds or until fragrant. Then add three quarters of a cup or 177 milliliters of chicken stock. Stir that to dissolve the curry paste. Then add one tablespoon or 17 grams of palm sugar and two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of fish sauce. Stir till is dissolved, then add one 13.5 ounce or 400 milliliter can of full fat coconut milk, followed by three additional kefir lime leaves. Bring that to a light simmer and reduce the heat to low. And if you want it ultra velvety smooth, then at this point you would blend it with a hand blender until as smooth as you like. Add in three quarters of a pound or 340 grams of boneless and skinless chicken thighs, cut into half inch cubes, stir that in and simmer for seven to eight minutes or until the chicken is cooked through. Now it's veggie time. Yay, something healthy for once. Unless you're heavily allergic to nightshades, then 
maybe not. Anyway, add one to two Thai eggplants, sliced about half an inch thick, stir that in and simmer for four minutes or until soft, then follow that with one and a half cups or 160 grams of snow peas, and then just simmer those snappers until they're softened to your liking. I like my snap peas to have some crunch to them, so one to two minutes is usually enough. Now once it's done, season that to taste with the juice of one lime and to taste with additional fish sauce and or palm sugar if you feel like it needs it. Albeit optional, I really like to steep two large sprigs of Thai basil in the hot curry to release some herbaceousness. Now you have an incredible curry, which should be plated up as such. Nice big bowl, beautifully steamed short grain rice on one side, and nice heaping ladlefuls of curry on the other. Garnish that bad boy with fried shallots, freshly sliced serrano chili, and fresh Thai basil leaves. Now this bowl right here, in my opinion, pays respect and homage to one of the greatest curries in the entire world that is for sure to brush your lips and splash upon your tongue to create a harmonious experience of drooling, gasping, moaning, and above all, smiling with the ones you love. Or you can just devour the whole thing by yourself. Totally cool. Anyway, let's taste test this and see if we have a proper curry or not. Bing bong. Sorry, but we're keeping it. Thai green curry, a special curry. One that's been requested many times is right here in front of me. Ah! First, I think we should just go for the, the curry itself, aside from all the vegetables and proteins and everything that's in there. If you wanna be hit right in the face with the most fresh Thai green curry that you will taste, assuming that you don't have a restaurant near you that makes it completely from scratch, this is the recipe for you. You can taste each individual aromatic, the galangal, the lemongrass. You know, the funny thing is, is the chilies aren't that spicy once everything's put together. It seems like it would be really spicy. It's really not, very palatable. Spice level wise, I'll give this a... For me, like a 4.23456789 out of 10. Not that spicy, as long as you don't launch it to the back of your throat. Everything comes together beautifully. Perfect Thai green curry. You can make it home. And yes, you should make the curry paste. You're not making this without making the paste. Period. End of story. Oh, God damn. You wanna know what else is creamy and makes you sweat just a little? B-roll. Guys, so we made our Thai green curry and it came out splendid. Once I made the paste, you could smell the fragrance and it was added to the broth and you had all the creamy coconut milk and it just it just looked right. One spoonful in the mouth, instantly. My brain was like, this was worth it. I'm doing this again. This was 100% worth it. Sure, it's annoying and obnoxious to have to grind it by hand and your arm gets tired. Oh, my arm's tired. You know what? We got it easy these days, all right? Technology makes everything easy. Maybe go back in time a little bit and use some of that good old fashioned elbow grease. I promise you it's gonna be rewarding for this. This is one of those recipes where I'm not just gonna say, oh, make it or not. No, you need to make this. You need to. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. You better make that goddamn curry, all right? It's real good, all right?